We have a surprise for you. We actually have a final speaker who was not on the program. She's a surprise guest, and some of you may recognize her from the student speaker contest in January. The TEDx UNC organizers wanted to give Laura Rozo, a Carolina undergraduate, yes. Wanted to give her a chance Come on here. to share with you her thoughts, her courage, and incredible story. So we decided, our organizers decided, to close this year's TEDx UNC conference with someone who we could all learn from. Please welcome Laura Rosso. When I was 18, I had the word success stamped on my forehead. I was focused on what I wanted to do. Always looking forward, checking things off my checklist, and living for the future. I was caught up in the work, and the grades, and the pressure. I thought my life was an exponential function. The next point on that trajectory took me to Portugal backpacking from north to south, and working on a public service project for two months in the Azores Highlands. It was an amazing summer that wrapped up a great first year of college. I had plans to backpack all over Europe, okay? France, Italy, Germany, Spain. It was great, it was gonna be great. But then things changed. My leg was swelling. I mean, it was swelling a lot. And although I tried to endure through the pain, one day my friend insisted that I go to the hospital. So we started walking to the hospital, but after a few minutes, I could not even walk. So eventually we flagged down a police officer, and in my broken Portuguese, I asked him, hey, can you give us a ride? Uh, to hospital, and so he took us there, and we arrived at, at the hospital. We waited for the doctors to tell me what was wrong. We waited nine long hours. And then a nurse told me that she needed to call the oncologist. It was then that my world started falling apart. It was then that I knew my life would be changing drastically. There were exams upon exams, scans, and lots of blood work. Until finally, the oncologist came to me and said, Laura, you, don't, you, you either have acute leukemia or high-grade lymphoma. So I, I did not want to call my mom. No way. How could I tell this to my mom? I was far from home and too young for this to be happening. So, five days later, I, I was flying in a private jet with two nurses and two pilots all to myself. I have to admit, that was pretty cool. So they brought me to a UNC cancer hospital where my mom and my brother were waiting. When I got to the hospital, the doctor told me, Laura, I have good news and bad news. 
The good news is that you don't have lymphoma and you don't have leukemia. The bad news is that you have a rare type of cancer and it is all over your body. It was the first time I would hear the word rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcoma. So she asked me if I had any questions. And my first question was, can I go skydiving tomorrow? And she said no. So I didn't, and I should have. She, then she explained the disease and told me, Laura, you have three options. A clinical trial, the standard treatment, or no treatment. And then I said, well, if I can't go skydiving, I want to fly. And so I did. While I took chemotherapy, I also took flying lessons. While I underwent radiation, I also went indoor skydiving. And while I went through the torture of living with needles, beeping machines, and excruciating pain, I still managed to teach salsa lessons from my hospital bed. You know, for me, death is not a threat, but the condition that maximizes my life. After 54 weeks of treatment and going in and, out, in and out of the hospital, my doctor told me that I was in remission. Remission! <sighs> but only three months later, I relapsed. The cancer was back. This time, I didn't ask anyone. This time, I just went skydiving. <laughs> I made my little brother go too. <laughs> we jumped off the plane. It was liberating. After my relapse and skydiving experience, I started another round of chemotherapy. I wanted to beat cancer back. After a month of treatment, I found out just last week that the chemotherapy was not working. Some of the tumors have doubled in size, and there are new ones. And while I don't have it all figured out, I do know one thing. I am committed to living my life fully and squeezing all the juice out of it. So that's why I'm here with you today, to share my story. I tell you my story because I am dying. The bad news is that you are dying too. The only difference between you and me is that I know what's killing me. The good news is that you don't have to be diagnosed with cancer to claim your life. I tell you my story because the minute you realize that you will die, you will finally start living. You will take that leap. You will make that jump. You will fly. So what makes you think that you have 80 or 90 years to live? Seriously. Seriously. There's enough time, but none to spare. If not now, when?